Every woman wants it. Every man needs it. Abiola on LSD. Love, sex, dating, and lifestyle. This is your life on Passion. Woo! That is the international sound of people having fun. Hey, rock stars, it's me, your girl, Abiola Abrams from AbiolaTV.com. You're watching Abiola on LSD. Love, sex, dating, and drama. And today I have something really exciting planned for you. We're broadcasting from the Plaza at the Trump Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. We're going to be interviewing Ms. Diane Farr. Now, Diane Farr is an actress and columnist. She's a love line aficionado. And you may know her from such exciting TV shows as California Cation, Numbers, and Rescue Me. Readers know her as the author of The Girl Code and her latest book, Kissing Outside the Lines, a true story of love and race and happily ever after. We're going to be talking to her about love and relationships, leaving us single girls behind for a life of happily married bliss, motherhood, ethnicity, and all kinds of exciting things. Watch this and we'll be back with Diane Farr. So as we're talking to Diane Farr about kissing outside the lines, I wanted to share some interracial love tips. I'm a chocolate girl that loves, loves, loves chocolate men, but I also am open to dating people that I find interesting and exciting regardless of their ethnicity. Rule number one for interracial love, follow your heart. There may be people in your life that disagree with your chosen loved one, but as long as they are a wonderful person, a good person, a kind person that treats you the way that you deserve, that's all that matters. Interracial love tip number two. Let them stare, honey. <laughs> That's it. Interracial love tip number three. Educate yourself. Don't just go in there all blind and, you know, maybe sit there embarrassing yourself at the family functions. Or if you're dating me, I'm Guyanese. Learn a little bit about the curry, okay? You know, I mean, learn a little bit about my culture. Where is Guyana? Don't ask me, is it in, you know, Africa or India or Canada? Do your research. All right. No matter who you're dating, it's about love, so don't ever sell yourself short. It doesn't matter if they look exactly like you or exactly the opposite of you. Know your worth. Know how you deserve to be treated. Hold yourself high and continue to be your shining and beautiful self. You deserve it. She is an actress known from such exciting TV series as California Cation, Numbers, and Rescue Me. And she's an author. She started off with The Girl Code that was all about us single girls living the fun single lifestyle. And then she abandoned us for a life of wedded bliss with her new book, Kissing Outside the Lines, a true story of love and race and happily ever after. Welcome to Love, Sex, and Dating, Ms. Diane Farr. Hey. On Earth, who has no cue card, who has no studio audience, and you got all that perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I am really excited about your new book. Tell us all about it. Well, on my sixth date with my now husband, it was maybe eight days into our whole relationship. We sat down at breakfast, and he said, "I have to tell you, I'm supposed to marry a Korean girl." And I thought, you have a Korean girlfriend? Like you're that guy <laughs> who's been waking up with me many a morning now? But he didn't. He was trying to broach the whole conversation of a recurring conversation he had with his mom and his dad from about the time of 13, 14 years old, puberty, middle school, junior high school, where these really educated and open and progressive parents who really believed in everything America had to offer and the golden rules still at home in the privacy of their own living room told their kids, but you can't love one of them. And they had a very specific list of them. And the conversation was shocking to me, not because my parents didn't have the same conversation right. with me. So sadly, as I went through the inter interviews for the book, so many kids that grew up in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s had this conversation with their parents. But 
what was so shocking was that he hadn't fought that battle yet. I fought with my parents from the second I left for college till about 25 when they too sort of came around. Right. To what conditional love really is and what it means to be American and the level of acceptance that they were still holding on to when it came to love. So I was looking at this 35 year old hot man that I was just starting to think I'd fallen in love with and mostly thinking, you haven't had that argument yet? Right. Like your parents still, in theory, get to pick who you love. So the book is the journey from there to the day we get married. And every time we hit a big bomb, you meet a different couple from a different part of the country who's of a different mix and you see their path. And it just sort of became a roadmap for how people of our generation might get past this, yes. might get past it personally and have what we're gonna teach our kids. Now, what I really love, Diana, is that in the book you, as you said, you included other couples and other couples' stories. In the book you say that you did that in order to do your own research. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. I, I needed help. After the first conversation, it was really like, well, how far am I going to go with this? If, if I'm never going to be accepted or if my kids will never be accepted, what's sort of the point? So I didn't want to ask my own friends because I didn't want to let all my dirty laundry out in the first five minutes of my relationship. So I started with friends of friends and it seemed like interviews and was I writing a book? Sure. I was writing a book. It just sort of counts the whole thing and it allowed me to ask questions you don't normally get to ask people yes. about their families worst behavior. Like in the privacy of their home, what was the secret conversation that you knew was the shameful? The secret ugliness, the shame. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's, it's part of your shame then as an adult too because yes. it's your history and it's what you were taught and you have to wonder, will you always be judged in that house or does it remain somewhere in the recess of, of your mind of how we're supposed to be divided? Tell us about the first time that you met your in-laws. It was much better than I ever thought, and it was a great example, and what I tell people now is that you can't let other people's headlines be your headlines. The idea of who they thought I was and the idea of what they thought our relationship was going to be had nothing to do with what our first meeting was like. All of the of the exposition had been done between yes. parent and child without me being there. When I walked in, they were lovely people. And it was such a great place to be and realize that you don't need a perfectly coined speech to change someone's opinion. You just have to live the life you want to live. And when you show up and you do it, that's how you can affect a change of heart. It's a slow process. I'm a girl born without any patience. Slow <laughs> does not usually work for me, but I had to do it slow. It, it was a process that you would take a meeting and you would walk away and you would take a meeting yes. and walk away. And by the time I got to that first meeting, we just we just stayed in the moment and it was lovely and it's only been uphill from there. Yes, that's great. Now, Diane's husband is Korean American. How do you pronounce his name? Song? His name should be Song Young, but Sung everyone Young. calls okay. him Sing. Sing, okay. And the kids on the block started with Sing, so it's, it's been a been long time. Sing, time. okay. <laughs> and you have three children. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that people are always the, the thing that they would say is, what about the kids? What about the kids? What about the kids? What about the kids? It's amazing. The kids are fine. It's like. Go it's, figure, they're yeah. kids and they're happy and they have parents who love each other. Yes, and I've sort of found almost across the board, no matter what, as soon as the child or the grandchild in many cases comes in, all is forgiven. All is sort of wiped away. And when I was growing up in the 70s, the argument was it's not fair to the children, that they right. would sort of be a pariah in any society. But I think accidentally we've become a little bit more American than most people notice. We spend so much time claiming other cultures right. as our own. Right. I'm Italian. You're African American. Right. Maybe I've never been to Italy. Right. Maybe I've never been to Africa. Right. But we grew up here. We watched the same TV shows. We had the same restrictions on eyeliner and curfews. And right. That common bond is always there for my kids. I, I haven't felt anything. My kids are young, mm -hmm. and of the couples that I interviewed, sometimes things come up later, but it's minute compared to the fear that, that you would put out there for your right. kids. Right, right. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I really also enjoyed your Funny or Die video. Oh, I want to be in one of your, in your Funny or Die web series. Right. Tell us how that came about. Well, my web series is called Ass Castles, and the last guy I dated right before I met Sting, I was shooting Rescue in New York. I went all the way upstate to see this amazing, gorgeous house. Yes. And you walk in the doorway, and I could see, like, seating for 25. Single guy. Single guy. Five bedrooms, and I'm like, no ex-wife, no children, nothing. And then you have to look around, and it's like, wow, this is an ass castle. You <laughs> built this place to pull down ass, and I'm the ass. And you're the ass. And I was too old to find that flattering. Like, I just felt like an ass. So the series was 
born out of the decadence. Yes. Of like, it should be an Al Qaeda training video because it shows <laughs> why people hate Americans. Like, yes. Excess to the point where you're you're building to show off for nothing but to have women follow through. So, Stop it with the ass castles. Yeah, the ass enough. cars were bad enough. <laughs> now, now we have to contend with the ass castles. <laughs> we may even see ass dorm rooms. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. So the book is called Kissing Outside the Lines, a true story of love and race and happily ever after. Any parting advice that you want to give people? Now you're a married woman, mm -hmm. just about being married, about regardless being married. of race. race. Yeah. It's really not a full stop. I thought when marriage came, that was the end of it, that you stop growing, you stop changing. But there's so much more growth on that side than I ever imagined. And if I had known that, I might have had a little bit less of a thick <laughs> desperation coat on. So okay, okay, great advice. Thank you, Diane. This Thank was you. fun. Thank Yay. You. You're so wonderful. See you next time. And as I always say, be good. And if you can't be good, be safe. And go by kissing outside the lines. <laughs> <laughs>